Does anyone have, did anyone ever do like the, uh, the make a CD or make like a single thing? Oh yeah. Amy did. My have, Amy did. Yeah. I have a, I have the CD and it's like, let's party, party, party tonight. Let's yodel, yodel, yodel to the morning. Hearing, line. hearing we, we Paul do the accent is the best. Paul, do that again. Let's party, 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 party tonight. He's going to offend somebody. <laughs> This is just between us. That's Horrible the best accent. thing ever. That's not Patreon content. I don't know what is. Yeah, party, party, party why, tonight. Why can't it be like the? No, it was like a Jamaican song. Like it was like. And I get made fun of for my accent. Gotcha. <laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the DVC Show. I'm your host, Paul Krieger. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't even know what to say anymore. This is my amazing wife, Amy Krieger. We've got John Sakari, aka Big Fat Panda, in the house. Welcome home, Derek DeBoer. I don't know what much else to say about him this week. So yeah, yeah. All I can say is, hey now, hey now. And the one, the only, finger gun, Jeff Haslam. <laughs> hey everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for joining us for this week's episode of the DVC show. Excited to be here and I hope you like our new ramblings at the beginning of these shows because I never know where they're going to go, but I just start recording and they take us to places that I didn't think our mind would go (laughs) ever, really. Uh, But here we are. But uh, we were talking about Disney Quest for a reason and that reason is tonight we are talking about ways to spend your non-park days at Walt Disney World. And obviously, uh, I think Disney Quest may be one of those many things that one of us has done over the years. So that'll come up, but we're going to kind of go around the room and talk about, you know, some of our things. I know Jeff Haslam just played a, a rousing game of mini golf um, at, at Disney World. I like recently. how you call him by his full name. Like, there's all these other Jeffs in here right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You got thrown under the bus. <laughs> no, it was just funny. Because <laughs> it's Derek and Panda and Jeff Haslam. <laughs> Thank you for that, Amy Krieger. Thank you. I appreciate it. We don't have a title for him. All we have is his last name. So. <laughs> Jeff Haslam. True. Uh, I'm done. I'm done hosting. I give up my hosting ship. One of you take it. Um, if you're enjoying our ramblings, uh, as always, uh, sponsor of this show is the world of DVC. Pause for dramatic. I get old. No, I don't. I don't know that it'll ever get old. I think we need someone to come up with some kind of graphic that, like, if anyone's a graphic designer out there and has some spare time and just wants to put together something for comedic relief. Send it to info at dvcfan.com. <laughs> DVC Resale Market. If you're looking to buy a Disney Vacation Club resale contract or sell a Disney Vacation Club resale contract, <laughs> they can assist with that process. If you're looking to buy a contract and you don't have the money for it, Monera Financial will just give you all of that money. And, not uh, all of it. Not all of it, but most of it. And you'll pay pay interest on it. But, um, you know, it's a great way to get into Disney Vacation Club. It's the way Amy and I got into Disney Vacation Club. It is actually, I just paid off our last Monera loan, like what, two days ago? Three exactly. days ago? Yep. We are done. We have no DVC debt. You know what that means. Until annual dues roll around again. You know what that means, Derek. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Amy. Hey now. <laughs> <laughs> and the DVC rental store, if you're looking to try before you buy that Disney Vacation Club contract of your dreams, try out some different resorts. You can rent someone else's Disney Vacation Club points for a fraction of the cost as it is direct through Disney. Or if you've got some extra points this year and you're not going to use them, you can rent out those points for cash and do something else with them. You know, buy a TV, <laughs> buy a couch. I don't know. Whatever you want to use the money for, it's yours. So Take Jeff on a cruise. Take Jeff <laughs> on a cruise. I hope someone emails us and says, hi, I'd like to take Jeff on a cruise. <laughs> Jeff Haslam, just to be clear. Oh, Not uh, all right. those so other we know Jeffs. Which, so we know, you know which Jeff we're If they're taking about. me on a cruise, I'll answer to anything they call me. <laughs> I, I will say I joke about not really knowing what's going to go on with this show, but the the I, I did come into this round of shows with these people. Um, many of you might know I've I've had some family stuff going on, 
these people have been so supportive of Amy and I, um, and my amazing wife, Amy has been so supportive of me as well, but kind of went into this round of shows saying, Hey guys, I'm going to need some, need some good ideas and need some love to kind of carry us. And just thank you to all four of you because, uh, you've been amazing. And so, um, and thank you to everyone out in the community too. I've had a lot of people reach out to us, um, just about some of the stuff that's been going on. So thank you. But enough of that. We're going to talk about ways to spend your non-park day at Disney, because I think those are some of the best days at Disney. And, uh, Jeff, was this your idea? Yep. I think this, I'll yeah. take credit for this one. I think this one was mine. Okay. Walk us through, walk us through it a little bit. Well, I just, I don't know. There's so much to do at Disney that's not related to the four theme parks. You know, it's, it's just such a huge property with so much to do. You've got water parks and golf and mini golf and all these other activities that the resorts have to offer that I just thought it would be fun to remind people of what else they can do, especially DVC members that, you know, tend to go more frequently than the average Joe. And maybe you're burned out of waiting in line for it's a small world. So we're going to give them some other things to do and some suggestions and, you know, some of our favorite things that we've done and see where it goes. Panda, I feel like you are the biggest Disney expert of this entire group. No offense to anyone else, but I, I feel like you, uh, you, you live, you eat, breathe, live the parks and, um, and know everything uh, about the resorts. So I'm going to kick things off with you and see, you know, what, what are Je- you doing? Je- on your Jeff, number? I agree with Jeff a hundred percent. And there are times that I've went just to the contemporary and just, took the monorail around, uh, went to uh, Fort Wilderness and visited the horses. That's something you can do. You can just go there and visit the Circle D Ranch and visit the horses and then go get a bite to eat. Then go do mini golf if you want. Then go to Disney Springs, go see a movie. There's so, there really is so much to do, especially at a DVC resort when they have those, uh, what do they call those rooms? They're like, usually for kids, there's crafts and movies. The community, yeah, the there's so know. much what? community hall. Sometimes there's, yeah. thank you. Sometimes there's so much to do in there. It's just amazing. I mean, forget just going into the pool. You can spend a whole day just doing things at the resort for sure. Yep. Amy, we, we had an amazing time at, is it Tri Circle D? Yes. Tri Circle D, not Tri D Circle. I messed that up. Tri Circle D. Probably five times during uh, our Fort Wilderness video. And yeah. I was standing right in front of the side. So. Anyway, uh, we took my mom to Tricycle D Ranch before going to Hoopty Doo, and it's not a huge place. It, you know, you as soon as you get off the bus, like near Hoopty Doo, you can walk right over there, and it's open throughout. You know, the daytime hours, and you can go and see the horses, and you can see the. I love the the Calliope, the old Calliope, and yes, then you can yes. push the button, and it it'll play for yep. you. And there's pony rides if you have younger kids because there is like a like an age height, you know, max for those. But uh, the, the couple of times that we've been there, they have been the staff, the cast members have been so amazing. So when I took my mom, they they said to us, do you do you want to pet some of the horses? And of course, my mom, you know, yeah. And so they would get they got you know, one of the friendly ones out and, and brought it over so my mom could pet it and just, you know, talked about it and just just such a great little escape and it's never busy it's never crowded you know there's only always yeah. just a few people in there so just a great and place to go we were not able to film any of this but on a, on a separate trip that we went on mm-hmm. we actually got to go backstage essentially and and walk through the stables and learn a little bit about the horses and walk around and learn about all of the treatment that they yeah. do. Yeah, and, and it wasn't because that anybody knew who we were no. or anything like that. We were just there. There weren't a lot of people there. And one of the managers says, do you want, would you like to see, you know, the back area? And yeah. he showed us which horses uh, are, get to play the Headless Horseman <laughs> uh, in the wow. Halloween parade and which horses pull Cinderella's carriage and and which horses pull, you know, main street vehicles. And, and that was so cool as well. Speaking of that, I, I thought, and you guys, will, you guys should find this cool, is that the Calliope, so one of the last thoughts when it came to the 50th celebration was that they wanted to bring the Calliope back to main street. And unfortunately, that thought was thought about too late because they said to train to pull that thing. Mm-hmm 
first off, it takes like six horses or eight horses or just a, a large number of horses to essentially do that. But, um, you know, the, the, the training time that would, that it would take to actually get that up and running, but wouldn't have that, like, couldn't that, that would have been so cool to see that thing just rolling down main street again. The other mm-hmm. thing is they've been doing a lot of like breeding testing mm-hmm. related to some of the horses to get pure white horses for Cinderella's um, coat, Care, yeah, carriage. Yeah. And so they've, um, they now have like two or three and they're continuing to work to breed these, to get those pure right, white horses. So that's something that in the future could be pretty cool. Wow. Um, and it's, again, it's like, this is just something that you stumble upon and. Yeah. So if you ever go in there, don't hesitate to start talking to the cast members. Cause that's, you know, they're there, they're there taking care of the horses, but they love to share information and tell you things and they might let you come and pet some of the horses. So. Yeah, that's definitely a great one. And be nice to them, too, because Amy said that, you know, I'm sure her mom is adorably sweet. So Amy said, and then they brought her out a nice horse. So if you're not (laughs) not cast members, apparently they bring out the really angry horse. (laughs) They bring out the fighting horses. (laughs) Fighting fighting horse. Do they have anything at Animal Kingdom? I mean, Animal Kingdom, I know you can go and just make a reservation at a restaurant and get there three hours before and sit down in all these little alcoves, whether it be Kidani or, you know, the Jumbo house and just watch the animals. But Amy, they never did a feeding giraffes or anything, did they? They do have a starlight safari and it is, oh. yeah, it's actually really popular. And Extremely it's, popular, yeah, it's hard very to hard to get. And you so have- you, yeah, you go out like right, Right around sunset, um, I believe they'll they'll give you some night vision goggles too as part mm-hmm. of it, and you'll go out on a little um, on a little truck similar to kind of like Kilimanjaro mm-hmm. Safari and wow. get to see all of the animals. And- yeah, so you're up close, you're you're on the savanna. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Derek's just like yeah, <laughs> it is a little. Expensive, I know how much. But- how much is Wait, it? Wait, even a the- hundred bucks? <gasps> maybe I'm guessing. Uh, I think it's seventy six to eighty nine dollars. I've got it right here. Seventy six to eighty nine oh. bucks. Oh, oh, see, that's, that's not, not bad at all. all. That's not for that some bad reason, for I thought that. it was more expensive because I thought it included I, dinner at like Jico or something. I think you're thinking of a different. I might be thinking thing. of a different thing, but but even if it did, that still wouldn't be bad. I mean, yeah, no, you're gonna eat at Jico anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, we're big animal lovers. Obviously, there's you know a cow looking dog that's on a couch <laughs> behind us here. Oh. <laughs> It's okay. He he takes it. By the way, I learned the story about what you do with those dogs, and I didn't know they were like endangered or anything. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. thank you, Panda. Yeah, we're actually. I, uh, I had no idea. That, that yeah. Was a so thing. yeah, side note: we're actually when we go to Spain in September, we're going to be flight guardians, and so we're gonna bring home a gaggle of galgos <laughs> to their to yeah. not for our not for us to the adoption. You know what I mean? We're to gonna the adoption to great. their so. yeah to their homes. Or you know there might be people waiting to adopt them. They might be bringing them to foster care. But so Derek, cool. you um, Derek, you spend more time in the resorts than you do the parks. I think the last time you were in the parks was 1986. Um, <laughs> oh, so. those were, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what are MGM Yeah, exactly. What are some of the things that uh, you like to do on a non-park Disney day? Yeah. So, I mean, I love going to the parks, despite what Jeff thinks, just because I don't go with him. But I love going to the parks. But I probably have more fun just going to the resorts themselves, just because I think, and I think when I heard about this show, the first thought that I had, which I suggested is, hey, we know we're local, so we live here, you know, And but sometimes people don't want to leave the Disney bubble. So let's keep this show focused because we know there's so many amazing things to do outside of Florida and go to the beaches and you can go to Universal and you can go to SeaWorld and we get all that. But I think like, you know, you guys have already touched on, there's so much stuff that even so many members don't even know that you can do. And yes, some of it, you do have to pay for it, but there's stuff to do. Like my favorite thing to do is to rent a pontoon boat, not the expensive. Oh yeah. But renting a pontoon boat with your family, and we're going to do that in March when we stay at the Grand Floridian for just a couple nights with the family. You rent it right there. You take that pontoon boat out. You're the driver. I'm a terrible driver. How they, some reason, allow me to have a pontoon boat on Seven Seas Lagoon is beyond me. But there is no 
better feeling than when you're driving and you've got your friends or you've got your family all piled in there and you're just driving right in front of Cinderella Castle. You're driving past the Polynesian. Then you can take it over to Bay Lake and you can cruise past those cabins. And I can't remember how much it is. It's not that expensive. It is absolutely 100% worth it. Even if you go out for like an hour, you don't have to go out on a you know, five hour bass fishing trip. You don't have to do that. Just go with your family, go on a pontoon boat because that feeling, I still get it like every single time when I'm like, can't believe I'm parked right in front, literally of Cinderella Castle. You know, it's just such a, such a great, great activity to do. And one that we have probably the best family memories doing. So highly encourage it. I pictured Derek parked in front of Cinderella Castle, waving at the ferry boat like Forrest Gump. And they're like, move. <laughs> as soon as I said it, I was like, are people thinking that I literally stop the boat and just float until the big <laughs> comes by and gets me out of the way? Yeah. But next yeah that's time, cool. ne next time your, your ferry boat <laughs> slows down, you know, it's Derek. Derek's out on <laughs> On the lake. That, but, okay. but it's nice because you can go into Bay Lake. I have a vision. <laughs> I, I have a vision. I feel like this group needs to do that because I've never done it. And yeah. it sounds like a blast. Yeah. It's great. But we, we can it's then great. switch our, our love boat thing that we did to a Gilligan's Island situation. <laughs> oh, we can take I, I the feel like I, I have a this three hour tour. Head, yeah, yeah. A three hour tour. We can go and visit bring, the island. Yeah, that's perfect. Idea. Bring old sneakers that you don't want. We could put them on the tree. <laughs> if you, there's a tree in bay lake for those that don't know and you have to be lose. authorized to throw your shoes up there i don't know there's thousands of i mean hundreds of pairs it's, on that tree so those are uh people who retire from yeah. being have left or retired yeah left or retired from being boat captains at disney and they get to throw their Ooh. shoes up there Oh, yeah. and that's why they're I've, all the I've same seen, looking shoe because they're they're, the they're 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 white work shoes. They're all like nurses. So Derek's nurses gonna, shoes. yeah, Panda's gonna go up there and throw like a pair of uh, what do you a wear? Pair of Nikes. Yes. Nikes. <laughs> one one pontoon tip that I will give you all, whether you want it or not, is I know you can get them over at Crescent Lake too, so you can get them from the yacht club. Do Bay Lake. Get them from the Grand Floridian just because you get them right there. You have access to Seven Seas Lagoon. Like I said, the castle, you can go by the resort. You can take it over to Bay Lake. When you get it at Crescent Lake, I mean, it's cool, but it's not like you're going out in World Showcase at Epcot mm -hmm. with a pontoon boat. So you're not. So you're kind of stuck to that area right there. Or you can take it down the waterway to the Hollywood Studios and stuff, but it's so much more impressive to do it on Seven Seas Lagoon. Mm -hmm. So. And they also offer, this. what was that, Jeff? We got to plan this. I think this would be fun. Right. Even if we just yeah, we should do like yeah. a Q&A or something on the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Pick a day. We'll <laughs> do it. Uh, we've also done the the fireworks cruise as well. So like the mm -hmm. pontoon fireworks cruises, those are pretty neat. Um, they'll take you out and take you out early enough before dusk to kind of like just mm -hmm. fully do a tour of that whole area and uh, tell you a little bit of the history of Seven Seas Lagoon. And then they'll park you like right in front of the train <laughs> train station or as Derek park would. Right next to me. You're parked right, right next, next to, to yeah, me. Yeah, right next to Derek. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, you'll get to see the fireworks. Sir, and they, please move. <laughs> <laughs> and then they kind of turn back around and they'll go back wherever you actually boarded from. So like when we did ours, it was Grand Floridian. They'll actually go back and they'll park you in front of Grand Floridian so that you can see the electrical water pageant come mm -hmm. by right at the end as well. So that's cool. I know they do these over at, at Crescent Lake, but I agree with what Derek said it's as a, well. Yeah, the ones at, at, at Magic Kingdom. Seven Seas um, Lagoon are better. I wish they would bring back the, the real boat that we need to rent out is Grand Yacht One. And I don't <laughs> think they've been able to start the engine on the thing since uh, the pandemic. Like I really, I, I'm not that's sure what our boat captain told us when we did the fireworks cruise. Yeah. I'm not sure it even, I'm not sure if it's even still there. They may have pulled mm -hmm. it finally, but uh, wow. no, it's, I don't think it's still there. And I definitely haven't seen it out and about, I did go on it once for like a television shoot that we were doing like years and years and years ago. And I remember being on it. It was just ridiculous. This whole thing inside. I mean, it literally is a yacht with your own captain. You sit on the front bow watching the fireworks. So all the people that had pontoon boats were like, had boat envy stare. Like who's that guy on this yacht over there? It was such a cool feeling, but yeah, that was super you're expensive. Just stand, you're just standing at the front of the boat. Hey now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Amy. What are give me some of your thoughts here on on these 
non parks day. Uh, okay, I I've I've said this in, a, in another video before. I and we this is another one like we have to do this, and we could take whoever wants to go because. I think it sounds amazing. I want to go over to Coronado Springs and I want to do there. I think it's on Saturday morning, Saturday, early morning or late morning, early afternoon ish. Uh, I want to do Sangria University. And <gasps> yes, they, yes. Yeah, so they teach you. I went to Jeff Haslam just because I know he'd say yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I'm into that. And it's like, it's you like 80. On Saturday morning. Oh, perfect. That sounds <laughs> it's like 80 something dollars. And you learn about like making sangria. You get to taste a bunch of different sangrias. You get snacks. I heard it's really fun. We've not done it yet. I, and I, mm -hmm. I want to do that. That's, that's taught one of the top things that's on my list. Honestly, when you talk about like bars or lounges on property, like three bridges. Yeah. It's at three bridges. Absolutely amazing. They've got, yeah. you know, amazing small bites great bar um you know it's a little bit that i just disney please either make it a disney vacation club property or and or make it like an added stop on the skyliner just that's that's the big limitation that, that coronado yeah. i feel, feel like gives to people is just the transportation here's right. another thing that i think would be really cool for a dvc fan meetup type thing oh. is i don't know how this works but doing something at splitsville yeah bull getting a couple bowling lanes <clears throat> You know, getting food. Yeah, absolutely. So, and we're not we're not stating the obvious things like just shopping. Some yeah. of these, uh, especially the DVC resorts, mm -hmm. some of the gift shops really do have different unique merchandise. Yeah, and I can spend a couple hours at each you know place just looking around. That's just another <laughs> a couple well, of hours. One of, the, one of the things I was gonna say is you know. We, Obviously, we like to drink in this group. I don't think that's a shock to anybody. <laughs> but the monorail bar crawl is one of my favorite things to do. You know, mm -hmm. you hop on the monorail, you visit all the different lounges, and you shop at the same time. Like, you just kind of resort hop around the monorail. One of my favorite things to do. We could do the pontoon hop, and we just stop at the resort, <laughs> get out. Even if there's no deck there, we just swim, get a you drink, have, get back in the Are you allowed to do that? Thing. Can I, like, park my pontoon somewhere else? And, no, no okay. you have to bring it back. Hmm. Uh, but on that same note, you, you know, you could do the monorail crawl. You could do a Skyliner one in I'm Riviera, awesome. Caribbean beach. I mean, you can head over to art of animation and there's a pool bar and you know what I mean? Like just different, just experiencing different, uh, places. But yeah, those are always awesome. Hey, uh, Derek yeah. with the hand up. Go ahead. <laughs> I know I'm so polite. <laughs> uh, I have a question, sir. Uh, but no, one one thing, as we're talking about boats and we're talking about transportation, one resort that I want to touch on, basically two, that I think because they're not Disney Vacation Club resorts, but I think are probably the most beloved resorts and so beautiful to spend time there is, of course, Port Orleans. So I think that whole, yes, yes. That whole area, again, I'm old, so I used to be Dixie Landings when I used to stay there, but Port Orleans and then the French Quarter, that whole area to be able to go there hang out, stroll around, take a boat then to Disney Springs, go get some beignets when you're there. I just think it's one of the most immersive, beautiful resorts. And I think it literally, I have probably more than anybody else over the last 20 years is always, I wish our favorite resort, we're still going to join DVC, but our favorite resort is Port Orleans. So any yep. Port Orleans is out there know it is a fantastic resort with great pools and even at port orleans one thing you can do that many people don't know you can do is you can actually fish you can go get a cane pole you can pay a little bit of money and fish right there you don't even feel like you're at a disney resort being able to fish right off the pier there so it's very cool i love to spend time there uh, and if so you're sufficiently drunk yeehaw bob <laughs> oh yeah yeehaw bob is a yeehaw good one bob's a great time did you guys know that that Port Orleans resort had a Mardi Gras Mardi Gras parade on Tuesday? Yeah. That was I, I thought forgot. that was really cool. So, and they also have horse drawn carriages too. So. Yes. Yeah. It's so pretty there. I love it. Speaking My, of Port Orleans and Mardi Gras, did you guys know that beignets have made it inside the Magic Kingdom now? Saw that. Ooh. Where are they? They're right past Picos Bill as you're walking towards Tiana's Bayou Adventure that's opening sooner than oh. we thought. On the left, there used to be the stand that sold McDonald's French fries back in 1985, but now oh. 
Oh, it's that's where it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. What's the I like. I that? like how that's the thing that Derek then remembers. McDonald's so. French oh, fries. Oh, I got it. Like, is it a stand no. that they re brought back up, or is it something? That well, it's been something chicken, before. It's been chicken tenders and fries for a little while. I know this because chicken yeah. tenders and fries is my middle name. But yeah, it's they're on the left, right past Pirates. Yep. Golden. Are the Alpha? chicken tenders and fries yep. gone? Yep. Oh, that's the one. okay. Are there still chicken tenders and fries with the beignets or I no? I don't think so, but I'm not 100% sure. Someone will, will correct me because I don't know. That's When it was a French Oak fry. Outpost. They they ro- they used to rotate their menu a little bit. So I miss the McDonald's Derek, fries there. I love Derek, do you remember the birds? The, the Disney French fries now are the worst because they're the same ones in every single park. They're just disgusting. They're terrible. I miss being able, I don't care what you say about, oh, it's too commercialized or whatever. You could go get a big, super large fry and be happy because you knew what you were getting. Here it's, I hate the fries. <laughs> to answer the your The birds question. used to get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to sit there and watch the bird as the people would come back with their fries. <laughs> it's like all the time. It's great. They do still have uh, chicken strips and oh, fries. Good. Good. So. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank God, because there's no other place to get chicken strips yeah. and fries at and Walt Jeff, Disney World. That Jeff's place. name has... Jeff's name has officially been changed now. Excellent. <laughs> Jeff, chicken tenders and fries has them. That's great. Oh, Love there it. you go. That is true, though. So my uh, the two things that I came up with on this, uh, a little bit generic, but um, lounging at the pools. I think that, you know, I think that's definitely overrated or not overrated, but uh, under underappreciated um, when it comes to a non-park stay is you can really have an amazing day just, you know, waking up a little bit later heading out, lounging at one of these resort pools, exploring what the pool bars have to offer. I think that's been like Amy and I's one of our favorite pastimes mm-hmm. when it comes to pools is like uh, if we're at if we're at Beach Club and Hurricane Hannah's, uh, we also absolutely love the pool bar at Grand Floridian. Mm-hmm. Beaches um, pool bar. Beaches pool bar. Um, <clears throat> some amazing food options at those places. So obviously we love yeah. food and we love to eat. And uh, so – those are big motivators for us. But um, as as all of you have said as well, just exploring the DVC resorts and just to add to the list of things that like we've wanted to do, one of the big ones at the top of my list recently has been over at Wilderness Lodge. They, on Thursdays, I believe it is, Thursday around 1 o'clock, they do a class where you can make, basically it's like a, a, a platter and or kind of a hanging thing that you can choose to have multiple different logos that you put on it. So it's like a it's like a wooden plank, and then you can paint um, or onto it one of many different logos. One of them is like the Disney Vacation Club logo. The cool one to me is like the Wilderness Lodge logo mm-hmm. that you can put on it. But this is done at Territory Lounge at Wilderness Lodge. So oh, yeah. you get drinks, you get some small bites and, and things, and then you get to make one of these. And I think um, it's around a hundred dollars ish. Yeah, whatever it is, I think is it per couple? It's you per do, couple. You make it together, and then you can choose to add on like another craft if you want to have two of of what you're making, or make two separate different ones, but. Um, all of, like there's unique opportunities. See, how do you there. find out about like there's no place to go to find out about these little yeah. detailed things? Remember they would do like there's, in the contemporary you could ceramic castle. Like I yeah. just I wish they would list all these things. Yeah, they should. I know. So you just have to be there, and there's a sign at Wilderness Lodge that talks about exactly. it. But if you yeah, if you're looking online, uh, you don't really find that because they have they have basically like paint and sip type things too, where you yeah. Yep. You paint different things. I know Animal Kingdom Lodge had one, you know, yeah. one time. So, Grand you, Party, yeah, yeah, you kind of have to be at the resorts and, and yeah. see what's going on. Yeah. But. And also high on my bucket list. I know this doesn't really apply to a non-parks day, but I'm just going to throw it in there. Um, any of the behind the scenes tours that you can do. Um, mm-hmm. I, uh, it's technically I, non-park. Yeah, I, I just think those are so cool. We did, you know, just we did behind the seeds at living with the land and just a a special experience. So these are those things that just are a little bit off the beaten path that you don't think about doing that do cost a little bit of extra money. But if that one was only $20, it's a little bit more now, but it's a definitely one of the cheaper behind the scenes. But like the backstage magic tour, you know, the things that take you down into the utilidors, all of those. Keys to the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, That's what I think. 
yeah, that's, that's what my I did. favorite tour I've ever done. It's it's so great doing it because I did it way before I even became a Disney cast member. And I loved it so much because I was kind of worried, like, am I going to take a behind the scenes tour? And is it going to like sap the magic out of me? You know, you know what I mean? But you do it and you have yeah. so much a bigger appreciation for everything that goes into when you're there, seeing all the work and seeing all the cast members and stuff. So, yeah, I wound up loving the parks more, learning more about them behind the scenes. Yeah. And Jeff, I think you just went mini golfing recently. I did. Last week I had a free afternoon and anybody that knows me knows that I, I'm a huge mini golf fan. Um, and I, I had never, I've done Fantasia Gardens a bunch. I love that one. And for those that don't know, that's an easy walk from Boardwalk or Beach Club. It's just across the street from the, the Swalfin, the Swan and Dolphin. <laughs> um, and they have the Fantasia, obviously, you know, themed after the Fantasia movie. They also have like a it's more of a putt putt course that's designed like a golf course with sand traps and water hazards and things like that, but it's still mini golf. But I'd never been to Winter Summerland over at Blizzard Beach. Those that don't know, it's open whether Blizzard Beach is open or not. You can go anytime. And I had a blast. I was by myself. Um, <laughs> I had got some great pictures, but one is themed as if Santa was on vacation at the beach and the other one is fully Christmas. They alternate beach boys songs with Christmas songs and it's fully themed out, but just a really solid miniature golf course. And I, I had a blast. Did you, did you win? I did. <laughs> I definitely competition. did. Competition. I will say I didn't realize that mini golf on property had gotten quite so popular or maybe it was just an off day, but Fantasia Gardens was sold out for the day. This was about three or four in the afternoon. They're wow. closed. They don't close That's until crazy. 8 p.m. And wow. Winter Summerland, each side had a 45 minute wait to get to the, oh, get on I the see. course. I didn't know it was that popular. Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of happy that I thought they were like hurting for business. I guess not. Yeah, not that particular day. I don't know what was going on, but had a great time. It was it was a lot of fun. It was a mini golf convention. Can you imagine yeah. going to play no. mini golf and then five, like being told, come back in five hours? Yeah. Or it's sold it was out for the day. The point, like we needed to book a tea time for, for your mini golf. It was crazy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole point of mini golf is what do you want to do today? I don't know. You want to go play mini golf? Okay. Yeah. Might as well. Yeah. But yeah, to show up and be like a 45 minute wait. Oh my God. No, thank That's you. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah no. um, and it ended up being a little faster. Mine was, I only updated about 20 minutes, but. And speaking of golf, Jeff, you've actually golfed at Disney as well. A couple of times. And this is something you and I still need to do when your life calms do. down a little bit. But yep. um, yeah, those that don't know, Walt Disney World has four four golf courses ranging from... Pretty serious, right, Jeff? Uh, so th they have a... a, a uh, God, what am I trying to say? They have just a, a nine-hole golf course that's really inexpensive. That's Oak Trail. They have Lake Buena Vista that kind of wraps around Saratoga and Old Key West. A um, little bit more expensive, but still I would put on par with like a municipal or rec course. And then they have the Palm and Magnolia that are kind of PGA rated courses, or they used to be, that are, mm -hmm. you know, up above $100 for, for 18 holes. But I got to tell you, if you haven't ever done it, you should do it once because they're very golf coursey, but they're very Disney. So like the cups, or imagine the pins have little characters inside the hole. So when you go to pull your ball out, uh -huh. each and each court, you know, each hole has got a different guy in there. Um, some of the sand traps are Mickey Mouse shaped, the, the, the golf carts and the lobbies and all that kind of stuff are all themed just as you would expect, you know, a, a Disney something would be. So um, I will say I only golfed the Palm once. That's one of the more expensive ones. Um, you have to have a whole training about how to work the golf cart because it's got GPS in it and it won't let you drive on the greens. It will just shut off if you get a little too close or if you go off the path where you're not supposed to. Um, but the most terrifying thing was he had to tell you, you know, have you ever golfed here? No. Okay, well, if you shank one into the woods, don't go get it. There's things in there that will kill you. And so you don't go ball hunting like you, alligators, snakes. We saw turkeys. We saw raccoons. Oh. Raccoon tried to steal my phone. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, but golfing at Disney world is a lot of fun. Wow. And I saw this somewhere and I wanted to look it up and make sure I wasn't crazy, but, uh, Disney's Oak trail also offers foot golf. Foot golf. Yes. Yeah. It's like football, but with golf. So they're, the balls are about, 
yay big and mm-hmm. the holes, but it's a nine hole kickball golf course. Hmm. Okay, that sounds like fun, actually. It yeah, does. That, now that sounds more my try. speed. I'm surprised yeah. they haven't gotten into like frisbee golf. That's been like that'd uh, be fun. Yeah, they should that, do that. That'd been like a that's been like a growing cape. And and while we're talking about this, I kept saying to myself, missed opportunity. Have like a par three course somewhere. Like yeah, that would be more that'd accessible be to people like me that suck at golfing and yet like golfing um, at the same time. But and yeah. and speaking of golf, Jeff, which I'm glad you brought that up. I don't golf. Uh, but my son is trying to, he's a freshman at Florida State. When he's home, uh, he's done a couple of times. He went over just to the driving range there. So right by the Grand Floridian. I'm not sure where it is, the driving range. He didn't have to make a reservation or anything else. He said it wasn't that expensive. He said it was really, really beautiful. He was in and out and home within like an hour and a half. So, you know, if you don't have all day, but you feel like you want to whack some balls, then you can do that. Yeah, and the Palm and Magnolia is right there. Like you actually park in the Shades of Green parking lot, but it, yes. it all wraps around right there at, at the Grand, and you can see the Rent a Car Center and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I want to go back and talk about Fort Wilderness, especially since it's going to be a DVC resort. Yeah, but uh, a couple things that I really want to do there someday. Uh, I want to do the archery experience. Which is basically, I'm out. It, it's like an archery class. And well, they teach you. I'm going to go. We're going. You just put the I'll, apple I'll on your Jeff head. With us. <laughs> She'll I'll get go. the apple. <laughs> uh, so I want to do that. They have kayaking um, as well there. I think on that, that recreation lake kind of out where people fish and stuff. And uh, they have horseback riding, which I haven't been on a horse since I was a little kid. So... I really want to try that. Yeah. It blows me away how much you want to go kayaking with me again. Cause the last time I think we kayaked, we were in Wildwood, New Jersey. It was a disaster. <laughs> and we got lost in like a salt marsh. And I was kind of navigating us and I would just take us through and we would hit this like it was like, swarm. It was a gnat. Gnats. Yeah, it was a gnat swarm. It was so bad. And, and we hit yeah. it like three times in a row. <laughs> and if you know anything about Amy Krieger, she does not like bugs. Yeah, so, I was ready to kill them. Uh, that was the last time. So, no, okay. Yeah, that maybe then we went kayaking on our honeymoon in Jamaica. <laughs> that and, was even better. And it was like, there. It's it says in the documentation we went to a sandals resort that they will teach you how to kayak and all this and actually i think that was our first time kayaking together yeah and so all they did was they put us in it they pushed us out and they were like teamwork and and that was it that was was our tutorial that's your your training (laughs) yeah and into the ocean we go i know we were gonna kayak in alaska but it was so cold we ended up canceling and choosing a different excursion but uh, but no, I, I want to try that. There's so much to do there at Fort Wilderness. There, um, yeah, there are a ton of options there. I, I think the bottom line is that there's a lot to do that people don't even know of mm-hmm. at these resorts. Yeah, you really could have a, a nice day of just, you know, book a lunch, book a dinner, and have activities all day. And that's what well, I think. Now is, now. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Derek. No, no, no. I was just going to say, and that's why I'm glad that Jeff kind of brought up the show, because, of course, for being Disney Vacation Club members, the joy is, you know, you're coming back. You get to come back. It's not just a once in a lifetime trip. So I got to go to the parks for 15 hours a day and then go back to my room and crash. You know, you're coming back. So this allows members some ideas to say, hey, you know what? We did Epcot last trip. Today, let's, you know, go kayaking and shoot some bows and arrows with Paul, Paul and Amy. So yeah, you can think of things to, to do that don't necessarily involve the parks and still have yeah. an amazing if not a better time than waiting in line for a ride that you've ridden 14 times before it reminds yeah. me of like one of the first trips well amy's first trip to disney world was a trip we did down here it was a family trip down to florida and we did not stay on disney property but like one of my best memories from that trip was a day i spent with amy's brother and her uncle and we went we got some wings and stuff for lunch we went and we played mini golf we um later that day we went to arabian nights which is no longer around and then we went and walked around um it was downtown disney at that time and we went to planet hollywood for dessert so like just all of those little things like it was a non-park day like Mm -hmm. it was it was like a rest and recovery day but it was also some of like the best memories that i have of of that trip and that vacation Well, and one other thing I want to mention that some people don't know about, I've talked about it a lot, but people 
are shocked that this is a thing that you can do. And this is one of the things that happens in a theme park that you don't have to have a theme park ticket for, which is pretty rare. And that's scuba diving at Epcot. Um, That's one of the first things I did when I moved down here. I always wanted to go. Um, It's expensive. It's up above, I think it's like 270 bucks or something. It's about a three hour ish experience, but you meet outside guest relations outside the park. They take you in the back door and you get a tour of the aquarium that the, the seas pavilion backstage. So you get to see where they, feed the manatees, feed the dolphins, um, answer all your questions about, you know, they talk about how, how they can filter that entire giant aquarium in like 13 seconds of, or whatever it is. But, oh my gosh. but then you get a, it ended up being a close to a 40 minute dive inside the seas pavilion. You know, you can watch the wow. people eating dinner at coral reef. If you guys remember full house back in the day, they, John Stamos actually did that. <laughs> um, but you get to go down and watch people eat. You can, there's manatee or not manatees um manta rays and all kinds of fish and there's a hammerhead shark in there and just it's all done very professionally with with dive masters and it's all very safe but it was one of the coolest things i've done at a disney park that sounds cool that's awesome that does sound really neat and paul and i have we've not scuba dive but we have been on the other side eating dinner and we've had like scuba divers come up to our window. So <laughs> it's kind of funny looking from the other side too. So yeah. You're like, Hey, that's Jeff chicken nugget and fries Haslam right there. <laughs> <laughs> you do have to be scuba certified. That's not something that you can just show up for. That is a yeah. requirement, but yeah. Teamwork. Oh. <laughs> there are other types of experiences also over at the seas pavilion, like different types of animal encounters and stuff that they offer too. Well, I think we've uh, hopefully provided you with some thought of something to do that's unique and different on your next Walt Disney World trip. Um, yeah. Before- hey, I do want to say real quick before you wrap up, if yeah. you are looking for other ideas, if you go to dvcfan.com, there is an article that I put out about two months ago. It's called Guide to Experiencing Disney World Outside the Park. So if you type in some of those words in the search bar, you will find it uh and it is a a whole list that goes you know all these things that you could do at disney springs all the different things that you can do at disney resorts and then other experiences it's not all encompassing but it's a a pretty big list of ideas if you're looking for more stuff too yeah and i would just add to that put your favorites in the comments because i'm always looking for something to do that i've never done before so put your stuff in the comments and maybe we'll film trying out some of people's favorites we We definitely have to do a pontoon we already have a pontoon boat so and that we Sangria can, we can block traffic. We'll do Sangria <laughs> University, then we'll rent the pontoon no, boat. I don't think they allow that. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, and I, I kind of want to see Paul dressed up as Robin Hood at this archery thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just buy me some tights. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the DVC show. Uh, we look forward to hearing your ideas for some things to do outside of the parks in the comments. And uh, we will see you all next Monday. Bye, everybody.